reality, you know, to, to the potential and what it can be. But it's different when the smoke envelops your town. Just a little bit somber. Deputy Chief Claywood took us to the muggy on rim. So as we look out there, that far, farthest ridge. This is a first-hand look at the forest crews have to battle just to fight the fire. Rugged country, lots of fuel, ripe for conditions. Nature in an unnatural state. Fire hasn't cleared out this area for years. Each acre should have less than 100 trees. There are areas crowded with a thousand. In canyons where you should see dirt, it's packed with plants. So they're dealing with much worse conditions than this. Absolutely. The crews off on those front lines, cutting down and clearing out this thick forest to take out fuel for the fire. The heroes battling nature to protect mountain it, communities. It, uh, got beautiful country up here. There's a tremendous amount of things to do, and we've got great people on the White Mountains. And you want to protect it. Well, Absolutely. This is home for so many of us. And we've been talking about the trigger points that the fire needs to reach to trigger those evacuations. I can tell you the fire is right at those trigger points, but the crews have been able to help it to hold it and prevent it from passing. So crews are optimistic, but they are warning communities that they still do need to be on alert, be ready to go if they have to. But again, it has not passed those trigger points that would force evacuations. Now the Red Cross, they do remain on standby in case people need to leave their homes. There's there's already a shelter set up at the Snowflake High School. As of this afternoon, about 30 people were there. One woman who had asthma said that the shelter has provided everything from hot meals to health care. I'm uh, real grateful for them because they, they go above and beyond and it, it looks like they're all volunteers. Now, a couple do dozen volunteers are running the shelters and they are running them around the clock. If evacuations are mandated, those numbers and the need for supplies will increase. Now, Donna Rossi is joining me here live in Cholo. Don uh, Donna, you've been here for the last couple of days. You've been talking to the people who are under this pre-evacuation mm -hmm. notice, but the feeling up here, it seems to be changing. Yeah, you know, I think people are much more at ease today than they were yesterday, even though they are still under that pre-evacuation order. I think the fact that the firefighters are making such good progress and they're hearing about that. I think they're thinking that the fact and the chances that they're going to have to leave their homes is much less. So the folks for the Pine Top Lakeside area, there is still a lot of smoke and still pretty thick over there. The steady stream of helicopters overhead is a reminder of the aggressive firefight going on just a few miles from their homes. Almost all of the people we talked with have taken steps to prepare for evacuation. Some have filled up propane tanks for their barbecues and RVs. Others have packed up their irreplaceable belongings. Even though things look much more promising today than they did just yesterday, they know that the threat is still very real. We went to some friend's house yesterday and spent the night with him over in Taylor Snowflake and come back today and we'll kind of play it by ear. Yeah. If it gets worse, we're going to back out and get out of here again. I'm feeling confident that, I, that I'll be able to unload it, but then again, just as a precaution because I do have four kids, well, three and one on the way. So I need to make sure that I have all the stuff that pertains to them, to us, just in case. A couple of observations. You've covered a lot of wildfires, so have I. This is the first wildfire that I've covered where people are really taking the pre-evacuation order to heart. So many people that I talked to have packed things in their trucks and they're just ready. They haven't left their home, some have, but they're really taking this to heart. They're really ready to go should, should they have to pull the trigger. And then the other thing is, you know, things can flare up like we saw this afternoon. And I talked to one of the firefighters and said, you know, I talked to people in town and even though things are great, they're still not unlocked loading their stuff back right. into their homes, he said, that's probably a very good idea. Yeah, you can relax a little bit, but you have to stay prepared. Absolutely. All right, Donna Rossi, thank you. And we have answers for pet owners who may have to leave their homes. The animals won't be accepted at the evacuation center at Snowflake High School. attraction. You probably know about the famous fountain in Fountain Hills, right? Claims he had absolutely no 
tried to appeal his death sentence today, but the state Supreme Court denied that request, upholding his conviction and punishment for killing nine people. Goodell still claims he had absolutely nothing to do with those crimes. All right, it's supposed to be a place where you get out for some fresh air, right? But it seems that the air is, well, anything but fresh up here in Fountain Hills. People are dealing with a serious odor issue. So we sent our Jason Berry to get you some answers. Visitors come from all over the state to see the Fountain Hills Fountain, which is a pretty impressive sight. Unfortunately, what you'll also notice out here is the smell. There is definitely a stinky situation out at the famous Fountain Hills landmark. Neighbors and visitors have been complaining about a foul odor out here for the past few weeks. Apparently the smell is being caused by algae in the lake and what's making it worse is water from the lake is being used to irrigate the grass in the park. Overwhelming for sure and it just like smells like you know that like gassy like rotten egg smell and it's just not pleasant. It's not a regular lake you know so you're going to get a little bit of smell from the heat but it's getting better and we're working on it in an effort to reduce the odor problem town officials are treating the lake with chemicals and running the fountain more often to increase circulation the fountain is now running for six straight hours from 5 in the morning until 11 that is in addition to the normal 15-minute run time at the top of every hour. Town officials tell me they've had odor problems at this lake before, usually when temperatures climb over 100 degrees. They're hoping by adding chemicals to the lake and increasing circulation, this place will once again be known for what it looks like and not how it smells. Reporting at Fountain Hills, Jason Berry, CBS 5 News. Next at 645, a gruesome death inside a Valley Beauty shop. The surprising phone call police say the suspect made after. And he protests and Donald Trump how Valley law enforcement is stepping up their efforts for the campaign rally here in Phoenix. Also, an Arizona woman says Border Patrol agents searched, snipped, even probed her for drugs that simply weren't there. What she says they did after the nightmare ordeal made it even worse. armed robbery and aggravated assault. This is new video of that fireworks stand that was set off inside a Walmart near 51st Avenue and Indian School Road. A viewer posted this video on Facebook showing how loud and chaotic the scene was inside that store. On Wednesday, no one was hurt. Police are still looking for four people who were involved. There's a picture of two of those suspects. Well, developing tonight, a possible murder inside a Phoenix beauty shop. A postman called police after discovering the body. This all happened near 35th Avenue and Camelback Road. Police said the victim was an employee at Super Imagine Beauty and Barbershop. We're told the suspect called 911 from a nearby park. He said... Thirty-seven degrees. In a press release, Sheriff Arpaio claimed that since he opened that jail, no inmate has ever suffered a serious health problem related to the heat. Well, supporters and protesters who are following the presidential race will also face the heat. Donald Trump returns to the Valley tomorrow, speaking at Veterans and Memorial Coliseum here in Phoenix. CBS Vice Dennis Welch has answers on how DPS is preparing for a possible rowdy crowd. happen within the to be on the air a six hour marathon will run on the 4th of July on the cozy TV network <laughs> cozy TV huh? I, I guess the howdy duty show premiered in 1947 as the first nationally televised children's show and the first NBC show to air five days a week.
All right, coming up next, more video in our newsroom of this ice cream truck. And look at this. You know, John and I were just looking at it and saying, well, how, how's a fire like this start? Is it in the AC? Is it in the engine compartment? But the engine compartment doesn't really have a lot of flames coming out of it. This is in a Phoenix neighborhood. You know there's kids around watching this, so we'll have the latest on this. Plus, deputies arrest a man suspected of neglecting dogs and other animals at his home. A special edition of Fox 10 News at 6 begins at 7 in just a couple of minutes. Hey, hon. Hey, Pat. I'm making Rianos for dinner. Can you pick up some hatch chilies? Oh, yeah, no problem. I know just the place.